Hey, hey, everybody. I hope you're doing well today. Well, this is the next installment of the Key Terms series for Theory of the Firm. And in this video, we are going to cover as quickly as we can total costs, marginal costs, and average costs. As we've been doing throughout this entire series, we've been orienting ourselves on this chart of costs, the key terms. And here we're looking at the short run costs, total costs, total fixed, variable, and total costs, average fixed, average variable, and average total and marginal cost. So we're going to focus on this column. If you're looking for these terms, check out some earlier videos. If you're looking for these, check out some later videos. But right now, let's take a look at total average and marginal costs. All right, let me just lay this out here first of all, just so you can get a, get a clue, right? Like, take a look at this thing. All right, now, the, the thing that gets confusing about theory of the firm is that we repeat some terms like total, like average, like marginal, okay? And as I've said in some other videos, you need to think about total, average, and marginal as prefixes of terms and costs, costs, and costs as suffixes for terms. Why? Well, because total, average, and marginal, they continue. They're prevalent. There's total product, marginal product, average product, right? There's total revenue, marginal revenue, average revenue. And here we have total costs, average costs, and marginal costs. And actually, because it's total average and marginal, no matter what the suffix is, right? In this case, we're going to be looking at costs, right? We might be looking at fixed cost or variable cost or fixed cost and variable cost. But ultimately, it's the same math. And this math's not hard. If we want to know the total of anything, we just add it up. If we want to know the average of anything, we add it up and divide by the number of things there are. If we want to know the marginal thing, we just look at the last one that we added. That's it. So <laughs> it's not that complicated, right? But you get all these terms in your mind, and you need to know them, and you need to know all of this, like, you know, all these letters, all these abbreviations, TFC, TVC, TC, you need to know all that stuff. But the concept's not hard, right? And so I want to say that to you right from the get-go, because you're going to have to know these terms. You're going to have to know that and have the precision of language to be successful in your analysis and evaluation. No doubt. You need to work on these things. You need to drill these things. You need to know what you're talking about. But conceptually, conceptually, it's not hard. Okay? So total, average, marginal costs. This case, the cost, the factor, what you always want to think about is what's in the denominator. For costs, What's going to be in the denominator is going to be the same thing, whether they're fixed, variable, or total. Let's take a look. So here's some definitions of total costs, right? So this is the first, um, sort of the top version of that. We're looking at total costs. Okay, well, check it. Total fixed costs, TFC, is the total cost of the fixed assets that a firm uses in a given period of time. You want to know how much stuff they make, right? No, that's not what it is. <laughs> TFC is the total cost of all fixed assets that a firm uses in a given period of time. Since the number of fixed assets is fixed, the total fixed cost is a constant amount. And therefore, TFC is the same whether the firm produces or not. And I think the best way to think about this is to think about a ski slope. I live in the base of the Andes Mountains here in Santiago, Chile, and there is a ski resort up there called Valle Nevado, right? Snowy Valley. Guess what? For Eight months of the year, no one is there but the mountain <laughs> and some empty chairlifts and a very, very skeleton staff of people who are taking, taking care of it. But guess what? Their costs, there are some fixed costs that they must cover in order to just maintain it, right? Certainly, all of the fixed costs have to do with the land and most likely the land and the, um, the capital that they have invested up there. They need a security force, right? They need to maintain the lifts. They need to maintain, you know, the hotels and the condominiums that are up there to a, to a certain extent throughout the year. But whether they're in business or not, whether there is one skier or 100 skiers, the fixed costs are the same, right? So what happens during the four months of the year where it does snow? Well, guess what? The variable cost kicks in. What's the variable cost? In this case, we're going to talk about labor. So all of a sudden, all their variable costs go up very, very much. Why? Well, because people are showing up. There's snow. There's, there's snow. People want to ski. They got the rental shop. They got the gift shop. They got the hotel staff. They got the lift operators. They got the snowcat drivers. Like, all of a sudden, their variable costs go way up, right? And so, but no matter whether it be, you know, summer or winter, the fixed costs stay the same. Cool. 
So the total variable cost is the total cost of the variable assets that a firm uses in a given period of time. Total vari variable cost increases as the firm uses more variable factor. Well, that makes sense, right? If the total variable cost increases as the firm uses more of the variable factor and the variable factor is labor, as there are more laborers hired during the ski season, what happens to the variable cost? It goes up. Super easy to understand. Total variable cost is equal to the number of variable factors times the cost of the variable factor. That's very simple. The cost of labor is a good example. So if your labor costs you $10 an hour, it costs you 10 times whatever many laborers you have. And then, of course, total cost. Well, guess what, my friend? You're going to take total fixed cost, total variable cost. You're going to add them up, and you're going to get a big fat star right there for knowing what the total costs are, right? And the total cost is the total cost of all the fixed and variable factors used to produce a certain amount of output, okay? Super important, total costs, yeah? Three types, but... Fixed, variable, and cost. It's logical. You can figure it out. Think about the ski resort if you need help. All right, moving on to average costs. Well, what are average costs? Well, if you look very quickly, you're going to divide them out by dun, 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 the same things, right? You are going to take total costs, total fixed costs, total variable costs, and divide them by a factor. And what's the factor going to be? It's going to be output or Q. Oh, dude, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's super simple, man. We're still talking about fixed costs. Oh, that looks bad. We're still talking about fixed costs. We're still talking about variable costs. We're still talking about the same thing, right? Fixed costs, variable costs, total costs. So if you want to go to an average, all you do is you take the total of something and divide it by something else. So you got to figure out what the denominator is. And I'm telling you, the denominator is the amount of output. So in the case of a ski resort, it's how many skiers there are. If it's in the case of a factory that's making um, nightside tables, it's how many nightside tables there are. Okay. So average fixed cost is the fixed cost per unit of output or fixed cost divided by Q. It's calculated by dividing TFC by the amount of output, or Q. And because TFC is always constant, AFC always falls as output increases. Why is that? Because the variable factor is labor. And as you increase labor, you are dividing your total costs, total fixed costs, by a larger number. And therefore, the relationship is going, or the average is going to descend. Okay? Cool. We got that one. Let's star it. Perfect. Average variable costs. What does that mean? It's the same thing. You're going to take your variable costs and divide it by what? Well, dude, the, the output. What's the output? It's however many things you make. So it's the same thing. It's calculated by dividing TFC, not TFC, but TVC, sorry, by the amount of output or Q. AVC tends to fall as output increases, then starts to rise as output continues to increase. This is explained by the law of diminishing average returns. Okay, we'll talk about that in a second. But the average variable cost, right, is, go is the relationship between the variable cost and the total output that is produced. Sweet. Then, no, I got to start that. Then what? Ah, average total cost. What does that mean? Well, <laughs> average total cost is going to be fixed cost plus variable cost, right? So ATC is, is the total cost per unit of output. So you take AFC and AVC and add them together and you get ATC or you just take total cost, same, same equation, and divide it by output, okay? ATC also tends to fall as output increases then starts to rise as um, output continues to increase. And that is because of the marginal, if you remember back, it's because of the marginal product curve is, it, it, it is, the, as, that better said this way, as you add one more output, if that one more output or one more thing, right, is more costly, it's going to pull your cost down. If that one thing is more, it, it, it makes you more efficient, then the average is going to be pulled up. It's the relationship between margin and average. If the next thing you add, the marginal thing that you add, is above the average, the average is going to go up. If the next thing you add is below the average, the average is going to go down. So think about 10 tests in school. If you take an 11 test, the marginal test is higher. It goes up. You were better. The average is going to go up. And the opposite for if the last test you take is a worse grade. You get it. It's pretty straightforward. 
All right, let's take a look at marginal cost, which is actually the most important factor here, um, really, as we go through this, because the marginal cost curve is going to be very important as we move forward. All right, so what's marginal cost? MC is the increase in the total cost of producing an extra unit of output. So you make one more thing, and how much do your costs change? That's the marginal cost, okay? MC equals the change of TC divided the amount of output, or Q, okay? So MC tends to fall as output increases, then starts to rise again as output continues to increase. And this is explained by the law of diminishing marginal returns. I'm going to show this to you in a second. Explanation. As more of the variable factors are applied to the fixed factor, the extra output from each additional unit of the variable factor eventually falls. So the added, so the extra cost per unit of output eventually begins to rise. This is a massive point. You can't go on if you don't understand this point. And I'm going to make it right here. Okay? Remember we were talking about, if you don't go back, you need to understand here um, marginal product, okay? Marginal product, as you add more units of labor from 1 to 2 to 3 to 4 to 5 to 6 to 7 up to 10, let's say you become more efficient in your factory. But then as you get to 11, 12, 13, 14, all the way up to 30, what happens? It gets too crowded and you become less efficient. So the marginal product, this is marginal product, okay? Let me put that there. Marginal product or... M P begins short begins to increase it, it, it's increasing then decreasing so if this is which it is this is your understanding of efficiency as you add more labor you became better at making whatever it is it was so if you're making coffee mugs you get better at it to a certain point when there are just too many people in the room and this was marginal product was the the next thing that you made divided by labor okay so as this is efficient getting more and more efficient then getting more inefficient well, efficiency, right, has to do with costs. So the marginal product of something, okay, is going to be the inverse of, the marginal cost of something, rather, is going to be the inverse of the marginal product. So if, and let me draw it, it's easier, right? If you draw it like that, okay, and if that is your marginal cost curve, just in our little example on top of all of these words, right? What do you see? Well, these are inverses of one another because as you become more efficient up to this point, naturally your cost per unit of output go down. But then as your productivity goes down for your marginal product, your workers become less efficient. They become marginally more expensive, so your marginal costs go up. This is an enormously important point for you to understand. Let me say it again. As marginal product it rises, you become more efficient and more productive. When that is happening, your cost per unit of output is decreasing. But as your variable factors, in this case labor, become more inefficient and less productive, your marginal cost per unit of output is going to go up. Remember this, my friends. This is critical Okay, critical, 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 critical for you understanding um, this term and also these, these graphs that we're building towards, or this is a, a diagram, this is a, a, a curve on the diagram, but you must understand marginal cost. If you don't, go back and learn it again and again and again until you got it straight. All right? Cool, my friends. Listen, you got this. This is another helpful, I hope, video talking about total, marginal, and average costs and how they fit into the greater matrix of theory of the firm to make you an excellent student. You got this, my friends. I hope you're doing well. I hope this video was helpful to you, and we'll talk to you in a bit.